This is update two for the uh, laser engraver project I'm working on. It's been uh, it's been about five days, I think, since the last update, and in that time I've uh, made a few more revisions on the kind of the physical hardware. I've printed out a load more bits and pieces and uh, kind of solved a few more problems. I'm still not quite there yet on the hardware front. The the uh, kind of electronics behind it. I've almost finished that and also tested the software with it and that is looking really good. So I'm just gonna run through some of these uh, bits and pieces now. So this is the current uh, kind of hardware configuration as it stands. It's, um, you can see it slides along. It isn't that much different from last time but uh, most of these parts, or pretty much all of them have been reprinted and optimized in that time. Uh, for one, the edge pieces here. Um, originally I was using a load of these on the side. They, they're quite wide, these uh, kind of mounting feet on the side, so it took up a lot of space um, kind of this way around. So I've uh, refined this design, I've kind of compacted it as much as I can. Um, I've also attached, this, at least on this side here, um, a hole or kind of bearing mount for the kind of drive shaft, as it were. And the kind of mounting is on this side as well, so again it doesn't take up any space that way around and I've got two sets, kind of front and back. Um, I found a few problems with the printing of these. Uh, the, these kind of, uh, kind of edge, piece, edge pieces here, uh, at least with one of them it did snap off when I pulled it out of the printer, so I've had to kind of tweak some of the printing parameters. For all these parts I've been doing it kind of a real kind of quick print for each, uh, kind of 0.3 mil high, and uh, I think it was about 20% infill. Um, so if the last places one of these had gone back to 0.2 and uh, I think 30% infill and um, just to try and get a little bit denser um, I've also kind of chamfered the edge a bit more and um, so that's looking promising the latest design of this so this I'm pretty happy with this part here the edge these um, parts here have undergone uh, a number of changes so I've got three other prototypes, and I think there's one more as well. The these are the larger, I think six mil or eight mil bearings, or linear bearings that are in this first one here. And um, I finally got the, the correct ones through. They are really tiny little, minute, cute little five mil uh, uh, linear bearings. There, they kind of uh, five mil kind of shaft to run through, uh, ten mil kind of around the outside, and fifteen mil in length. Um, so they're, they're tiny and they fit within this piece here, so I'm really pleased. The At the moment I've got um, two in this one here. This is still running the, the original, kind of larger bearing, so it wobbles a bit. These other ones are quite smooth. This one here, um, there's a little bit of movement that way, um, so I'm probably going to need to uh, stack in two linear bearings next to each other to stabilise it. But other than that, that's looking alright. The uh, kind of... Uh, anti-backlash nut arrangements mounted in the bottom here that's the same mechanism I kind of mentioned previously and that's looking alright um, the other thing is the, the width of this so this uh, previous one here is slightly wider and the anti-backlash nut arrangement with the spring I've got um, was really good inside but for this one here I'm just trying to reduce it down so I knocked off a couple of mil each side and that's uh, kind of compressing the spring a bit more, increasing the tension, and it's made this uh, ver really, really stiff to rotate. So I'm probably going to go back to a slightly wider design that would accommodate the original uh, spring setup. Um, so there's that kind of out the way. The uh, this slide piece here does work well. The uh, this kind of rotates really nicely. I'll rotate this around. So this isn't fixed at the moment. So the motor would go here and rotate this and it then moves along. The laser diode then mounts this platform here. So the diode here will attach and then move along and then back and forwards like so. so this is the, the back of the board. I'm probably going to have a motor mounting here. And the this length here is a little longer than I need so I'm probably going to drop this back a little bit. Uh, room to kind of accommodate so the motor there. So at the moment this uh, kind of positioning and the setup of this gives me around about 25 uh, centimeters travel in kind of the X direction along here and um, it's higher than my um, original kind of 
plan, I think I was hopefully going for uh, around about 20 centimeters. So 25 is more than I need. And so uh, to, in order to fit the motors in, this will drop back, and that's fine. I can probably still fit it in within the 20, keep the, the 20 centimeter range. Going across is a bit more of a problem. Um, if the laser diode is mounted in the center here, it's kind of pointing down to there, and then obviously it, uh, as it kind of moves along to the other end, it'll reach uh, roughly there, and that's around about, uh, um, I think that came in at approximately uh, 11 or 12 centimeters, which um, is significantly less than the 15 I wanted. The I can't think of an easy way of uh, increasing this within the current footprint. These side rails here, I could potentially also there. The orientation have these bars, um, they the kind of the shafts vertically mounted, um, which would free up a little bit of space, but I'm quite far down the line now with this layout here. I don't really want to start backtracking on that. Um, so I might uh, end up having to increase the width of this. So in the end, it'll probably end up being uh, kind of close to a, a square uh, frame. Um, I don't think that's too bad. I'm going to take a look how it fits on kind of a shelf where eventually it'll need to go somewhere. So as long as it's not too big, then that shouldn't be a problem. The one thing I haven't received yet is the coupling to join the motor to the uh, shaft here. So I can't really see how smoothly this runs. And the this does sm run really smoothly like this. So if I just pull the shaft through. This motion is really nice, uh, which makes me think I'm not going to need to drive both sides. So if I just drive this one side, I don't need to worry about this over here. I've got some play here. Um, there are a couple of reasons for that. I mean, one, these uh, kind of linear bearings in here, they're not the right size. So it's not hugging the rail as it should, um, which gives it kind of room to kind of flex and move. Uh, when I put that in, it'll tidy it up. Here I've only got a single set of linear bearings inside here. I'll probably double up to give it a much kind of better kind of hug onto the rail, um, which should improve things a little bit. And there will naturally be some bend like this. Um, obviously bend here, these kind of come together and twist, but I don't think that's a problem. Um, as long as as long as it's not touched when it's in operation and it's just left to do its thing, I think it'll be accurate. I think it will be repeatable in its kind of pattern and design, so I think that's all right. Um, but time time will tell, I think, as to how that goes. Um, this mechanism here is pretty light. It's quite a, tucked in a nice arrangement here. And um, apart from a little bit of uh, kind of twist like that, which I think which can be easily solved by putting in more bearings, that mechanism is fine. This is the main electronics board. Um, this here uh, pretty much works as it stands. There's a few more tweaks to some of the connectors down here and a couple of more LEDs to put in. But other than that, it functions and I've had it running with um, a stepper motor and it, I can drive it from the computer. This runs the GBRL kind of open source software, which you just kind of feed G-code commands and it translates it as it needs and outputs it. So there's kind of two stepper motor connectors on there, the limit switches for each. Um, down here, there's kind of the laser output and some uh, switch kind of contacts for uh, some buttons placed somewhere on here. Uh, there's going to be two power inputs, uh, 12 volts for the steppers and another 5 volt supply for the electronics. The system itself consists of uh, basically an Arduino kind of Pro Mini uh, unit mounted in here. And I've got um, one of the FTDI kind of USB serial converter chips mounted on a kind of ProtoPic breakout board here. And that then kind of connects to the, across the two. And uh, there really is very little going on here. The motor controllers themselves are the Polu kind of black edition boards. I went with these because they're simple. I used it on the previous project and it's uh, quite nice. Uh, I've mounted them in the, the kind of connectors here. This uh, is so if it does blow, I can easily switch them out. I was hoping for something a little more lower profile, but um, this is all I had. Uh, but there are a couple of benefits in that I can slip a nice big capacitor underneath and there's a bit of airflow in there as well. So it's not too bad. And I've uh, I've come so I've had this tested and running, and remarkably it kind of worked first time. The uh, the kind of software, the GBL software, kind of compiled straight away. 
and then uploaded straight to the board using the uh, bootloader that's already in there. So um, this setup is really nice. Obviously, there's a lot of config settings which have to be tweaked and set up for my arrangement, but I'm still some way off that at this stage. The power of this laser engraver is going to come from these two units here. I need uh, 12 volts for the steppers and kind of really shifting them around, and I need 5 volts for the electronics. The laser diode, um, depending on what option I go for at the moment, it would run a 5 volt quite happily. But if I do get hold of a higher power unit or a different type of laser, then hopefully uh, 12 volts will be suitable for that. So both of these units are overrated. The 5 volt unit is um, it's a Traco power module, exactly the same as I used on the uh, bed project I worked on recently. Uh, it's uh, 3 amps, 5 volts, really lovely little unit, it just does its thing. And this one, slightly different, uh, but basically the same thing. And um, this is uh, TDK Lambda, I believe. Uh, yeah, um, it's 12 volts at 6 amps, I think it was. Yes, 12 volts, 6 amps, uh, break the mains input, same kind of outputs. Um, and it is going to get very, very overrated. Uh, the motors at absolute maximum will be 2 amps each. Um, so that gives me an extra couple of amps in there. And um, for whatever that needs it, and uh, these can be mounted quite happily and fed into the main electronics board. So I think that kind of covers off all the uh, the main parts at the moment. I'm still waiting on a few other bits, um, so hopefully it'll be another update shortly when I've got some of the final bearings in and I can see how smoothly it runs. And hopefully the the most couplings. So that'd be really nice to see it. Uh, uh, the kind of the, the kind of bears kind of moving or the the laser kind of mounting, moving around based on commands from the computer.